Hello and welcome everybody to this automotive technology video. My name is Nick Dimitrakopoulos and I work for Electrics, Electronics and Infotainment here at Rodren Schwartz. And in today's video we are going to talk about the Generalized Precision Time Protocol, in short GPTP, but also known as the IEEE 802.1 AS. For this reason, I have invited the CEO of uh, TSN Systems, Jürgen Soring. Thank you for uh, joining me, Jürgen. Hi, Nick. So uh, before we start, can you tell me a little bit uh, why this GPTP is very important, not only for the automotive, but other industries? Yeah, we see nowadays uh, the, the growing demand for time-sensitive uh, communication based on Ethernet. And therefore, the, the very basis of time-sensitive and deterministic communication is actually a precision time uh, distribution all over the system. And this is uh, GPTP, that's what it does. And, and it brings you, uh, within some nanoseconds, a very precise time all over your system. I see. This sounds very interesting and important. Um, what have you prepared for us today? What have you brought with you? Yeah, we, I have brought uh, three of our TSN boxes, uh, which could serve as a test and measurement environment. Um, and therefore, we have, of course, on one side here a GPTP master, and uh, on the other side, the, the most basic uh, situation, this would serve as a GPTP slave, in our case, the device under test. And we just wired this uh, based on automotive Ethernet, 100 base T1 cabling uh, from the master to the slave, and in between, in the middle, uh, we have a, a highly synchronized TAP device, which is again a TSN box, uh, and therefore we can really monitor all the GPTP Ethernet traffic coming back and forth in our software, the TSN tools, which runs on my notebook. I see. So uh, these twisted pair cables at the front there is the automotive Ethernet going uh, from the master through the TAP to the slave. And I have also seen that you have synchronized the, the master with the tap using the BNC connector. And how do you uh, access these devices with your laptop? What software do you use there? Um, yeah, we, we have uh, basically two parts to manage uh, these boxes in its different uh, variations. Uh, we have a, a standard gigabit interface on the back of them. Um, and uh, we can uh, monitor that. Uh, based on our, uh, uh, based on a web interface, actually, um, yeah, and so we, we can manage uh, uh, all the functionalities of the of the boxes via web interface. And um, additionally, of course, um, to monitor the traffic that comes through the cable, we have a dedicated software that we call uh, TSN Tools. And uh, this kind of software gives you all the correlations and insights of the traffic and the payload of Ethernet traffic, and in that case, today, we focus on GPTP traffic. I see, thank you for that. And I understand for uh, GPTP synchronization, there are various methods to, to measure it. Uh, would you like to explain, uh, first of all, what we will uh, use today to measure this? Exactly, so uh, we, we talked about it, it's about uh, uh, in the range of tens of nanoseconds that we want to measure. So that is a, a little bit of a challenge, especially if you want to do it live in a system and not only on a device conformance testing. And therefore, GPTP gives you basically two options to uh, validate the, the, um, the, the quality of the synchronization. And option number one is uh, the so-called one PPS method. That means uh, that's one pulse that the device, a master and a slave, puts out on a dedicated pin to, uh, in order to, to, to give you every second a very precise uh, 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 raising edge. So, and this is what we did today here. Um, so every, uh, each and every of our devices has on its SMA output um, this one PPS uh, signal, and we routed that to the Rode and Schwarz oscilloscope. And a, a second version of um, monitoring it is the so-called reverse sync method. And therefore, in, in, in that application, uh, we, we ask the slave to send back sync messages over the Ethernet cable. And this is what we can show in the second step. Uh, therefore, we monitor these kind of uh, messages um, just with our software and do the calculation and the math there. I see. So we have the one PPS method and the reverse sync method to measure basically this 
uh, PTP. Exactly. So what we have uh, already done, and you mentioned, uh, we have the one PPS output coming from the GPTP master. We have the same uh, one PPS output from the tap device, but also from the slave. So we have uh, on the channel number one, and I have labeled them into the RTO6 oscilloscope, which is uh, really cool with a 15.8 touchscreen display. Uh, in the yellow, we have the GP, uh, PTP master on the yellow channel. In the middle, this is the synchronized tap, which is the signal coming from the one in the middle. And finally, from the uh, DUT, which is here now the PTP slave, we have the third channel here in the orange color. And uh, you mentioned that this one PPS uh, pulse, you, we can already see it on the oscilloscope. So if I scale this a little bit, it's typically we see it's around 25 uh, milliseconds for this example. Okay, so what I have to do, I guess now is trigger on the start of the pulse and have a look how good is this uh, precision for GPT? Exactly. So let's have a look. I'm going to now scale into this uh, in the time domain and I'm going to go at the very beginning of the pulse. Okay, so what you see right now is we have a very stable trigger coming from the GPTP master. This is our reference. And here we have the synchronized tap on the second channel in green, which has a, a small deviation. We're gonna measure it in a second. And uh, finally, we have the orange channel number three coming from the GPTP slave. And this is basically what we want to, to measure. So let's have a look how we do that. I click on a measure in my oscilloscope. Let's make a reference between uh, channel 1, which is the GPTP Grandmaster, and channel 2, which is the synchronized tap. I will uh, measure the amplitude and time, so I'm going to enable this. But also let's make one more reference between the channel 1, the Grandmaster for GPTP, and my DUT, which is the GPTP slave on channel 3. Again, measuring the same thing, I'm going to enable this. Channel. So we can see, first of all, for the GPTP master and the synchronized tap, we have a very stable synchronization with a measuring RMS value of 1.1 roughly nanoseconds. Now on the bottom, we see that there is a deviation of around 45 to 50 nanoseconds on the DUT for GPTP slave. Let's uh, have a more detailed look, so I'm gonna hit the menu, the settings, and on the display, I'm going to activate the infinite pre uh, persistence. This means I will be looking at all the values that uh, happen over the time. And now you see the deviation again appears uh, with a range of RMS of around 50 nanoseconds. So Jürgen, I think this is very well within the spec of the GPTP synchronization uh, requirements. Yes, so that's, that's around a typical um, requirements in automotive is saying the synchronization throughout a network should be better or as good as 100 nanoseconds. And we see, of course, in this very simple use case, without any switches in between, we are in the range of 30, 40, 50 nanoseconds. And that's, that's, that's quite uh, what you can expect on that synchronization. I mean, again, that's synchronization over an Ethernet cable, so no dedicated uh, uh, BNC or, or nothing uh, else. So that, that's quite challenging, actually. And I guess if this uh, synchronization is lost, maybe you can add some drift to that. We can also monitor on the oscilloscope, but can you show us how we can actually simulate such a drift using your tools? Yes, this is one feature uh, we have built in our uh, PTP master, uh, where we say, okay, uh, having a very precise and good PTP master is a nice thing, but for measurement and stress testing, of course, we need to inject some, some errors, some chitter, some, some wonder, whatever. Uh, and therefore, this I can manage and I can give you uh, on the PTP master uh, some chitter uh, or actually some wonder. Mm -hmm. And now you should see uh, the sync signal drifting uh, slightly away. 
Yeah, it's already going away and I'm trying to catch it here. <laughs> so I have to scale out in time and we can see already that the signal is uh, drifting away. Fantastic. That was really cool example. And uh, you mentioned also that there is uh, another method to measure this GPTP synchronization. Would you like to talk a little bit about this as well? Yes, sure. Um, uh, having the one PPS output, this is a very powerful and also a very uh, clear tool and metric to judge how good is synchronization. But of course, if you are maybe already in a system in the car or uh, uh, for other reasons, some devices don't have the one PPS pin and so on, then it's going to be a little bit hard uh, to, to, to wire up all your, your, your devices uh, up to an oscilloscope. And therefore, the, the, the GPTP profile for automotive gives one second um, option to measure uh, the, the sync accuracy. And this is the so-called reverse sync method. And reverse sync means um, I can ask the, the, the slave device to send back some uh, PTP sync and sync follow-up messages. And the, the slave device would put in uh, its actual time inside these packets and send them out. And if we now capture these packets with our synchronized tab, where we very precisely know what time are, is, is it on the link, and we compare or correlate this time on the link with the time of the, of the, of the synced uh, or of the device under test, then we can have a, a really good metric to judge how good is the synchronization without any hardware uh, uh, wiring. Yeah, I think this is interesting, especially CUs that you don't have access to one PPS clock signal. Exactly. Uh, can we have a look how we yes. visualize this in your system? Sure. Um, so now we, we are going um, into what we call the TSN tool software. So, and this is basically the the idea when we started to 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 write a software was that with time sensitive networking. Um, you really need the correlations, right? You, you, you're a manufacturer of oscilloscope, you know what it is. And so we wanted to have a, a, a pretty much the same thing for Ethernet packets. And uh, it's all about the correlation and the timing and the patterns and so on. And that's the reason why we did uh, this approach to the software. And uh, yeah, we, we can monitor that um, and see the packets, how they come in and, 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 and over. And, uh, uh, we have one special analyzer, what I just uh, described, we call it the slave clock wonder analyzer that just correlates the timing inside a reversing packet from the slave to, to the timing of when it is on the bus. And if you correlate that, you have a pretty, a pretty nice um, indication about the chitter and wonder of your PTP slave and you get a histogram and things like that, what we see here. Fantastic. Uh, Jürgen, thank you very much for joining me today and showing how it's possible to make those uh, GPTP uh, measurements and also explaining the different techniques there. So uh, on behalf of myself and Jürgen Soring, uh, I would like to thank you for watching this video. Please make sure that you go to the Rodensfarts Automotive Solution page, but also the TSN System Solutions page. And I will see you next time. Until then, Stay safe and healthy. Goodbye.